G'day, Ben from Duck Plain Chicken here with something a little bit different. I want to talk about an issue I've found with my airbrush. So first, a little bit of an introduction. This is the Grex Tritium TG. It's a pistol style airbrush, double action, gravity feed. This is my go-to airbrush. I use this all the time. Um, I use it for water-based acrylics, I use it for lacquers. And the thing I really like about it, um, apart from being pistol grip, which I find a lot more comfortable to use, uh, the other thing I really like about it is you can change out the needle sizes in it. So at the moment this has a 0.3 because I've been spraying lacquers, but you can get a 0.5 mil or a 0.7 uh, mil kit, so you can actually get different sort of size needles for it. The other thing I really like about it is that it's really easy to clean um, and this thing hasn't missed a beat. I've been using it for years now um, and it hasn't missed a beat until recently. So uh, I've been doing some work where I've been testing some colours for a future project and I've come across an issue where paint is coming out the back where the needle goes in. Now this happens when I do a back flush. So that basically means where you sort of pinch the end here, pull back on the trigger, the air sort of goes back up through into the cup and it helps remove any paint in the, um, you know, in the guts of the airbrush. Now, some people will say, oh, you shouldn't do that with the airbrush, you know, it ruins the seals and all that sort of thing. I've been doing it for years, I've never had any problems. The only thing that's changed is that I've started using um, lacquer um, paints sort of a lot more. So I'm wondering if the, the lacquer uh, thinner has um, somehow affected one of the seals in here or whether it's just become dislodged. Now, the what I've read on the Grex website is that the seals, the Teflon seals in, in this product are solvent safe. But there's, I suspect where the problem is coming from is potentially from number 51. I'm not sure if that's actually going to be the issue or not. So that's a packing seal. Um, and so I'm going to have a look. I'm not sure if that is actually the problem. But I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to give it a, a, a good clean. I haven't cleaned it yet. I've literally just got out of the spray booth. So I'll give it a good clean first. And then I'm going to pull it right apart, see if we can find the issue and see if we can fix it. Before I strip the airbrush completely down, I want to talk about the process I go through for cleaning my airbrush. So if I've done sort of a session of airbrushing, I'll always give it a really good clean. Some people just sort of rinse theirs out, um, but I will actually just, you know, um, do a bit of a strip back and, and clean it properly. So the way I go about that is I take the cup off and around this thread you need to be careful because it traps plenty of paint. Um, the seal's pretty good but it still catches a bit of paint in there so I just use an old airbrush to sort of get in there and get the uh, ingrained paint out. Then I will take the back needle cover off and here we've got the chuck that holds the needle in place so I'll undo the locking nut there a bit and I'll draw the needle back just a little bit just so it's not poking out the front and that means I can take sort of the nozzle and the nozzle cap and all that sort of stuff off without worrying about bending the, uh, the needle while I'm doing it. So the first thing I'll do is I will take off the, the crown here, the crown cap. And the good thing about this particular um, airbrush series is these are magnetic so they just sort of clip in and out nice and easy. I'll take this uh, nozzle cover off and for this I'll use sort of a just a normal cotton bud to you know go around I'll dunk this in whatever thinner is appropriate and uh, clean this um, top bit up and then I'll take these pointed cotton buds and sort of feed it in the middle there so I can clean out that hole. The next bit is the nozzle itself. Now, depending on your airbrush, you know, these things vary in size, but generally they're pretty small and difficult to sort of clean. Um, with this airbrush, you get a, a really good sort of spanner with it. So you just want to undo it. 
Now, you never ever want to over tighten these. I've made the mistake before many years ago where I over tightened it and the threaded part of the nozzle got stuck in the airbrush. So you really don't want to over tighten it. So undo that. And so you can see there is a bit of a thread there. Now I use these, I, I don't know what they're called, but they're sort of like, um, almost like toothpicks, but they've actually got a bit of cotton on the end. And what I find is they're really good for sort of holding the nozzle in place like that. And then I can actually get the uh, toothbrush and I can clean, you know, clean it quite easily without slipping out of my hand. The other thing these are good at doing is sort of cleaning out the, uh, the base of the nozzle. So I get in there and, and flip it around. And then finally, I will use um, what dentists use for sort of, um, I don't know, picking out the middle of teeth or something. I don't know what they're exactly used for, but they're called paper points. And these are size 25, and that's because they're really quite small. And I'll pick one out with a uh, pair of tweezers. And so I find these 25s are good for the 0.3 uh, needle. And then I'll thread that through and just give it a bit of a, a scrape and that'll point out the that'll clean out the very tip of the nozzle. So I find uh, find that works really well. And these paper points you can get them on eBay or AliExpress, you know, they're not uh, particularly expensive. Okay, so take the nozzle out, give that a good clean. And that's when I'll take the uh, the needle out and the needle you want to be very careful. So I'll take a bit of paper towel and I'll cover it with whatever um, thinner is appropriate. And what I'll do is when I'm cleaning it, I'll wrap it around the needle and I'll just pull like that and keep pulling. You don't want to go back and forth, back and forth, because you might accidentally stick the, the needle into your finger or thumb. And I've done that before and these things are sharp. They go in all the way to the bone. So my uh, best sort of bet is just pull it all the way back, pull it out, and just keep doing that. You're also less likely to damage the uh, the needle tip and bend the needle tip, so just do that. And you only need to do it gently. You've got to remember, I'm just lightly pressing sort of around here. Let the thinner on the paper do all the work. And then I might do a couple of passes just at the end, you know, if there's any sort of paint collected there. But that's how I'll sort of clean the, uh, the needle. Take the chuck nut off. And then I will get in here with um, some thinners and some, you know, cotton bud and sort of clean in the hole here. And then I've got a small uh, brush like this, which I will put sort of into, you know, slide up and down inside the, uh, the airbrush with a bit of thinner on it. And that's my process. And I'll do that, you know, after every sort of um, airbrushing session I do. And I find that that has served me well. I've never had any paint splatter issues because of the airbrush. I've never had any sort of blockages and that sort of thing. So now from here on, I go into the next step, which is trying to find out, you know, what's going on with uh, paint coming out the, you know, coming out here. But I thought it'd just be a good opportunity to sort of show you what tools I use for cleaning and also how far I take my brush back when I'm doing cleaning. So that's usually it. But I suspect that when I uh, pull the rest of it apart, we're probably going to find some more parts that need some cleaning. So on the bottom here, I've got a quick uh, connect. So this is to connect to the hose on my um, compressor. And these, uh, these are actually Grex branded ones. They're, they're really good. I'm going to take the handle off. And so I'll unscrew the bottom uh, nut here. And I suspect that most of this I won't have to worry about. And the handle should slide off. So this is where sort of the um, you know the the valve is for the air, and I don't think I'll actually need to do anything on that. I think um, I think I might leave that as it is. It shouldn't need any cleaning. I'm just going to take it out just to see. There we go, and we've got the end bit that goes on here. 
Okay, so I don't see any sign of sort of paint. There's still a little bit of grease on that, so I'm not too uh, not too fussed about that part of the airbrush. All right, we need a small screwdriver for taking off the uh, taking off the handle, um, taking off the trigger, I should say. So just unscrew that. So that's a long sort of screw. Um, there is a little bit of a little bit of crud on the inside of the handle, but there doesn't seem to be any paint, which is good. It's just a bit of uh, leftover grease, I think. So what I'll do is I'll put some more grease on when I put the uh, screw back in, because really it needs just a little bit of grease, sort of where that uh, where that hinges on. All right, now the next step is to take this back piece off. Now, there is a very small uh, screw for this particular model. Yeah, all right. I'm gonna get a little tray, just so I don't lose this, because this is likely to roll off my desk and end up on my gray floor, and I won't be able to see it. So a little screw there. Got a bit of, got a pair of pliers here. I'm just going to loosen that off. Now I suspect in this um, center shaft there's probably going to be quite a bit of paint. So and this here is spring loaded, so you've just got to be careful when it lets go. So we take that out. Take this out. And then we can see, uh, so get that down, maybe you just see there's like another um, brass bit in there in the guts and it's actually got two slots on it, just big enough for to get a screwdriver down because what we need to do is unscrew that. And so this is the bit that the, uh, screwdriver, uh, the little screw is holding in holding in place. So we just need to unscrew this all the way out. And there we go. We can see it's sort of a threaded threaded insert. Okay. Right, so that comes out. And there's a spring. And then we should be able to take this centerpiece out. Now I expect a little bit of paint here. So See, see how it looks. No, it's not too bad actually. Not too bad. I'm going to give it a little bit of a wipe just in case there is any paint on there because uh, I'll put some more grease on there I think uh, after it's done. All right, so uh, let's see, can I get a screwdriver all the way down there? Ah, oh, that must, that's the trick. Okay, so a little screwdriver all the way down, and hopefully I should be able to take this through that into part out, and I reckon this is where I'm going to see the problems. Well, I'm hoping it is anyway. Alright, yeah, it doesn't look like there's any, there's supposed to be a seal in there, and it doesn't look like there is one, or it's stuck in there somewhere. Well, they got the little devil out. Um, so after um, a bit of finagling, what I ended up doing was using my old um, airbrush needle, and I went in back, you know, blunt end first, and you can actually feel it in there. You can sort of feel it just the edge, and so you push up against it, and eventually it'll work its way out. Now I reckon this is the problem. Um, I think it is going to be worth me replacing this it doesn't appear to be damaged um, by you know the um, thinner that i've been using it i suspect it's probably more just that it's um you know maybe i've been a bit rough putting the needle in or something like that and what's happened is i've just marred it a little bit but i did have a look um what I did was I, I put the, when the packer was still in there, I put the needle 
uh, back through and I could see just a little bit of sunlight so I reckon that's definitely where the um, where the paints coming back from um, you can see on the packing insert here that it's um, it's got paint on it um, but I still reckon that's because it has worked its way around the thread um, because there's a gap in this so looks like I'll be purchasing one of those um, thankfully I do have another airbrush I can use in the meantime um, that won't actually stop me in fact I have exactly the same model <laughs> so um, all right so I think what I might do is put this back together um, at least now I know what the, the sort of problem is and see if I can see if I can order another one so it's been about three four weeks uh, since I sort of pulled apart my airbrush and worked out that uh, I needed a new packing seal so I finally received a, a new one um, it's come from the state so it took a while but that is the uh, the part number there and I want to show you um, sort of show you yeah the where the issue lies and and how it's quite clear now now that I've got a brand new packing seal what the problem was here we can see we've got this is the old one now if I take the needle and sort of put it through it doesn't uh, pick it up so I'm putting the needle through the hole but it sort of slides off so if I pick this up and just jiggle it about you can see it just slides right off which tells me that there's been a bit of wear and tear in the hole there now if I take the new one and put it on I can already feel that that is so much tighter and it's not coming off at all so it was definitely the packing seal that was the problem um, so uh, I, having a look at it sort of under a magnifying glass it is it appears that it's probably just worn out over time I mean I've been using this for about seven years maybe um, I don't know, I've been using this particular airbrush for quite a while, so I think over time it's just sort of worn the middle out, and it's probably due to me being a bit, uh, bit rough with it. But um, anyway, the good news is, it looks like that is definitely what the problem was. Now, because I got paint all the way sort of through the inside of the airbrush, I have stripped it right down and given it a good clean out. You can see there's sort of some scuff marks some scratches um, this poor airbrush has had a hard life but I've given it a good clean just to make sure there's no sort of built-up paint left in the uh, in the guts of it the other thing that I want to do when I put it back together is use a little bit of uh, grease now um, the instructions are pretty clear for this airbrush not to use sort of um, the, uh, what is it petroleum based grease I think so to use sort of synthetic grease so this is to me a stuff it's made specifically for airbrushes I bought this ages ago and I've still got plenty here so this is it's good stuff for, for lubricating so I'm just going to show you while I'm assembling I'm going to sort of use a bit of grease as well and the first thing that I'm going to look at this is the what's called the shift pin so this is uh, the bit that basically where the air sort of enters into the airbrush body and so this uh, moves up and down um, it sits on the, the air valve like so okay so um, as you, you know, use the, uh, the trigger you'll get, you'll get more air so what I need to do is just put the tiniest bit of grease around around this uh, shift pin. I'm going to take a dab on the toothpick here. Just a little bit. It doesn't need a lot. It just helps lubricate and seal it. So just a little bit in there. And what I can do is feed this through. Actually, before I do that, I think I need to. <laughs> I 
that's right, the pin's in there. But I, uh, I need to deal with this screw first before I put the actual air valve in. So the next thing to do is put the new packing seal in. So that sort of sits uh, in this threaded piece here. And it sits in like that. And then use a flat headed screwdriver to uh, screw it into place. So let's see if we can get this in, at least lined up. And then get a long flathead screwdriver. and tight now. The next part I need to put in is the slider. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit of grease just in here um, because when this goes in I obviously want it to be lubricated. So let's get let's get grease and lubricate up the slider. A little bit too much on there. So this slides down here. Make sure I put it in the right way. There is a spring which goes in here. So next is this uh, threaded insert. I want to get that started before I um, take to it with a screwdriver. There we go. And what I'm going to do is line this. So as I screw it in, I want to check this hole here because that lines up with a hole on this threaded insert. So you can see it. You can see that sort of hole appearing now, so I just need to go in maybe a little bit more just to line it up. That looks pretty centered to me. So I'm going to try putting this screw in here, and that just locks that insert in place. You don't want that sort of insert coming loose over time because it helps put the tension on the spring. Yeah, for the trigger. Now, I think I mentioned previously, the, the only time I would tear down the airbrush at this point is when I've got a problem with it. Uh, normally, you don't need to go to this extent to tear down the airbrush, certainly if you're just cleaning it. Okay, so that's, uh, that's good. All right, now I can put the air valve in. And you'll note I'm doing all this sort of just finger tight. I'm not over tightening anything. Um, it shouldn't need to. If, you, if your airbrush is in good working order, you shouldn't actually need to sort of tighten anything um, too much. All right, next we have uh, this piece, which is keyed, so I think it only slides in one way. If I remember rightly, yep. And then we have the back end cap. All right. And next is the, I might as well put the trigger on.
Alright, that feels pretty good. So everything seems to be in working order so far. So we can put in the, uh, the nozzle. And again, you should you don't need to over tighten these things. Just give it a um, you know a little bit so that you feel it's not going to come loose. But you don't want to over crank it. And put the nozzle cap on. Crown cap. Get the, the handle on. The nut that holds on the handle. my quick connect hose fitting. Now we should be able to get the needle down. Now in the instructions they um, talk about lubricating the needle but I've never I've never done that with my airbrushes. Um, I'm sort of really conscious of the fact that the needle is in contact with paint so I don't want to use anything that's going to re you know potentially react to the paint or change its properties you know, in any way. Right. Now I can feel it as I push the needle in, that's definitely a lot snugger fit. Uh, normally I could sort of pull it straight out, no problems, um, but pushing it in there's that little bit of resistance. It's not tough, it's just a little bit of resistance and you know that that seal is, um, is a lot better than what it was. All right, so everything seems to be working okay. Can put the, uh, the back of it on, and of course the paint cup. And that's basically it. So the next thing for me is to actually test to make sure that um, I haven't got any issues with it. I'll do the back flushing and stuff a couple of times just to check, but I suspect that that will probably be um, that will probably be it. So I might. Come back just quickly um, after I've given it a bit of a test. Okay, it's been a couple of weeks, so I've uh, given the airbrush a good, good running just to see if that packing seal was in fact the issue, and it looks like it is. I'm not getting any paint coming out here now when I back flush as part of the cleaning process, so I think that is um, well and truly fixed. So it means that this workhorse is uh, now ready to go again and um, hopefully I'll get many more years out of it. But uh, I hope you found it useful, at least the, the full tear down and how I go about cleaning my airbrush. So until the next video, I'll catch you later.